Okay, so we are back for our second debate of the day. Super excited for this one as well. Who was here this morning? Just a raise of hands. So almost everyone in the room, so you kind of understand the general format that we are working with in terms of how the debate works. The good news is that all of you will have a chance to ask questions to challenge the debate team. So please think about what they're saying in their opening remarks in our moderated discussion and think about who you want to potentially challenge or maybe you're reinforcing what they're saying. Now most importantly, and this is where you also come into play, we do need you to actually vote right now. So if you can take out your phone and scan the QR code on the sheet that is on a chair beside you, we're gonna get um, some opening numbers, a, a tally really, on our debate question. Is robotics helping or hindering our progress toward the UN Sustainable Development so Goals? So that is our question. So this is the, uh, we'll let this go for about a minute. This is where our panelists get, <laughs> our debaters get very nervous. Yes, yes, is, yeah, yeah, helping, yeah, helping. So I guess, the, I guess it says yes and no. Okay, yes. Okay, so yes would be helping and no would be hindering. Yeah, so just the, the terms weren't updated, but you guys follow along. Oh boy, I wish I didn't just look over there. Very stressful. Um, okay, so yes, yes is helping, um, no is hindering. Don't worry, the no team, it will be fine. You have a chance to turn this around <laughs> once and for all. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know what the UN uh, sustainable goals are, sustainable development goals, um, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water, I won't go through all of them, but you start to understand the flow there of those goals as you answer this question. Okay, so we have about 44 responses submitted. I'm gonna make an assumption here that everybody who wants to vote has voted. And uh, so let's take our tally. So the answer is for the yeses, AKA helping, we have 68%. And for the noes, we have 31 percent. I'm not sure how that adds up, but <laughs> nonetheless, we have a, a general starting point there. Uh, okay, so let's move on to our opening um, arguments. Before we get into them, I do want to introduce each of our panelists and give them a chance to tell you who they are. Um, want to say that they've been assigned this viewpoint. Uh, so, not that they're forced to argue this viewpoint, but uh, they have been assigned it. First up, we have uh, on the yes or helping side, Dr. Heather Aldersee, who's an associate professor and Queen's National Scholar uh, at the School of Rehabilitation Therapy. If you want to tell us a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, so hi everyone. I think I was invited here today because I'm also the special advisor to the Queen's uh, principal on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. My work has nothing to do with robotics, so thanks to the organizers for the chance to think about the SDGs and think more about robotics than I think I ever have in my life in preparation for this, this debate. Um, my work is related to support for people with disabilities and their families in the community, um, but at the Queen's level, I do a lot of thinking around how do we push ourselves as a community to have impact. Excellent. Uh, also arguing for the yes or helping side, we have Melissa Grief, who's an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and a member of Ingenuity Labs. A little more about you. Hi, so uh, my research is in aerial robotics. I focus on vision-based navigation and safe learning-based control. And I'm really passionate about taking the algorithms that we develop in the lab into the real world. Excellent. Uh, on the no side or hindering, we have Dr. Michael Jenkin, who is a professor of computer science and engineering and a member of the Center for Vision Research at York University. A little more about you. Hello. Um, yes, robots are bad. And we will <laughs> demonstrate it completely here. Um, I've been working in robotics since about 1988, and I've been involved in a number of large robot projects, including ones for nuclear power plants and contaminated crime scenes and aquatic robots. And even so, robots are bad. 
Excellent. Uh, and finally, we have Dr. Jackson Crane, who's an assistant professor in mechanical and materials engineering right here at Queens. Thank you. I'm a combustion scientist by training, so not exactly robotics, but now I think a lot about how we can make sustainable fuels that don't emit carbon, at least on net basis, and how we can make engines more efficient, burn less fuel, burn alternative fuels. Excellent. So uh, as always, let's have a big round of applause for our debaters. <laughs> Woo! If by chance you forget who's on what side, I uh, want to say that the graphic <laughs> behind them actually matches up. So good bot <laughs> on one side that we, we have the helping and yes side and then bad bot on the other uh, hindering or no according to your QR code. So let's start with our opening remarks. Um, for all of you who are new to this debate, as I mentioned previously, you have five minutes right now, each of you, to really set the tone for your argument. I'm going to time you and uh, make sure you don't go over that five minutes. And uh, we're gonna start on this side and we will go down the line. So first up, we have Dr. Heather uh, Aldersey and I'm gonna start the timer now. Robotics technology is a powerful tool that's already being used to harness the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It will continue to do so with more effectiveness, efficiency, and innovation as technologies continue to develop. We need innovation, including robotics, in particular now more than ever. In 2023, we are officially at the midpoint of the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda, and progress has stalled on all fronts. So if we keep at the current rate of progress, we will only achieve 15% of the target set out by the UN by, 2020, by 2030. The International Federation of Robotics has identified 13 out of the 17 SDGs to which robotics can contribute to create a better planet and a more equitable human society. I'll speak briefly today about three of those goals, um, in particular goal eight, decent work and economic growth, goal three, good health and well-being, and goal 13, climate action. And, and I'll use these goals to offer some examples of how robotics research and innovation show promise in delivering on the UN SDGs. Many academics and practitioners have written about and experienced the value of robotics for good health and well-being. For example, robotics played a key role in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic safety with workers conducting throat swabs to reduce exposure of healthcare workers. Additionally, during COVID-19, interactive automatic hand uh, disinfection devices in public spaces were particularly valuable. Beyond COVID, drones have been used to monitor air quality and alert local populations to unsafe environmental conditions. And soft robotics have been implemented as wearable physical therapy uh, technology to help people with disabilities with improved mobility, independence, and reduced recovery time after procedures. The list could truly go on about the various ways that robotics can be used to improve health outcomes. For decent work, robotics can be used to replace the unhealthy and unsafe labor upon which many of our food systems and economies rely. This would allow for vital work to be completed without the need for humans to carry out dull, strenuous, and often dangerous jobs. Robotics have been used for recycling e-waste, a dangerous process that when done by humans exposes workers to toxic materials, pays poverty wages, and is largely carried out by workers in or from the global south. Robotics can also help support work done by humans with assistive technology aimed at speeding up research and development, providing workplace ergonomics, and assisting in job training. To combat climate change, innovations in robotics have seen robots develop that can plant trees at rates 10 times faster than humans, autonomous boats that eat ocean pollution and turn pollutants into fuel, and robotic recycling machines that can identify different materials and support them quickly and accurately. Robotics technology has helped with improved modeling of the impacts of climate change and in-depth monitoring of environmental health. And as climate change causes increased natural disasters, robotics are playing a key role in disaster response, mapping effective areas to aid in search and rescue and rebuilding efforts. These are just some examples of the work currently being done with robotics for sustainable development. And I could have chosen many of the other goals and given many other similar examples. Admittedly, there are risks and trade-offs of robotics as it relates to the SDGs. A common concern is the impact of automation and robotics on the job market, and that innovation in robotics will lead to a lack of jobs in the future. However, while technological innovation has historically led to the end of certain types of work, innovation also creates new jobs to take their places, which could include meaningful and dignified jobs 
relating directly to the production, design, operation, and maintenance of robotic solutions. And with trends in robotics towards replacing critically important work that is hazardous, unhealthy, and undignified for humans, these new jobs will likely be safer and more in line with the definition of decent work that's found in SDG 8. Robotics use towards the SDGs also raises ethical concerns, including that of surveillance and privacy of the data collected by robotic devices deployed in public spaces, as well as the environmental impact of manufacturing robotics on a larger scale. In response to both of these concerns, experts stress the importance of a strong governance framework and local, regional, and international governance bodies uh, for the use of robotics in sustainable development work. This would include measures to ensure the traceability of data collected and its uses, uh, transparency in the development and creation of all robotic devices to measure for environmental impact and ethical labor, and shared responsibility and accountability to the communities in which robotics projects will 20 be 20 seconds. <laughs> I believe that with clear identification of potential risks of robotics to people and planet, we can mitigate and address these risks to help ensure their use is pushing us toward and not away from progress on the UN SDGs. Excellent. All right. All right. No pressure to our other panelists. Uh, that was excellent. Um, Melissa, you are next. I will start the clock now. Do you think the world is getting better or worse? If we look at the evidence and the history of global living conditions, the answers are sounding better. Let's go back 200 years. You're in 1823. In 1823, the vast majority of people lived in conditions that we would call extreme poverty today, less than $1.25 per day in 2017 money, according to the UN goals. In 1950, more than 70% of the world was living in extreme poverty. By 2015, the share in extreme poverty had fallen below 10%. The first UN development goal is to eradicate extreme poverty. We are heading in the right direction. In 1823, only every 10th person was literate. Imagine that. If you were alive in the 1800s, there was a 9 in 10 chance that you were not able to read. Today, more than 8 out of 10 people can read, and this number is only higher for, for younger generations. So what changed in 200 years? The answer is simple. It's productivity. Increased productivity made vital goods and services less scarce. More food, better access to med medical care, less cramped housing, housing, and improvements in sanitation. Productivity is the ratio of the output of our work and the input that we put into our work. So I want to remind everyone today that the debate is about robotics, not only autonomous robots. So what is a robot? It is an embodied intelligence system that gives us the ability to collect more data, get to hard to reach places, and do things faster. In other words, to create more output with less input. It is ultimately an incredible tool for productivity. So how is or will robotics prog progress us towards the 17 um, SDG goals? To answer this, important, this question, it is important that we do not miss the actual targets and indicators that are associated with them. I encourage everyone to look at the actual targets. There are not just 17 goals, there are actually 169 targets that cover a wide range of ideals. And many of these targets are actually interconnected with the possibility of co-benefits. Today I will convince you of the role of robotics in co-benefiting the progress towards multiple goals. In fact, according to a recent article in Nature from 2022, robotics and artificial intelligence has the potential to enable delivery of 134 out of 169 SDG targets. Robots can take over manual tasks deemed too dangerous or repetitive. This co-benefits targets in goal one, eradicating poverty, goal three, good health and well-being, goal nine, infrastructure, and goal 11, sustainable cities. For example, one of the goals states that by 2030, enhance resilience of the poor and vulnerable to climate-related events and other shocks. Some of the indicators, number of deaths, direct economic loss attributed to these disasters, and the number of countries adopting a risk reduction strategy in line with the Sunday framework for disaster risk reduction. And this framework basically outlines four priorities. And interestingly, under every single priority, there is reference to the use of technology. In fact, part of the strategy is to support research in disaster risk management, promoting investments in innovation and technology. The UN released an article titled, Robots to Rescue, Using Technology to Mitigate Effects of Natural Disasters. 
And they claim that while rescue robots have been used and their reliability has significantly improved, and I quote, innovation is a critical factor in robot technology, which is considered a next generation industry that can foster employment and economic development and help advance the 2030 agenda through practical solutions. In Japan, for example, damage to Fukushima in 2011 triggered significant robot research due to radiation preventing humans from carrying out direct cleanup. And in 2017, a small robot dubbed Little Sunfish, equipped with five propellers, video cameras, and array of sensors, and designed to operate under a severe radiation expo exposure, succeeded in locating the missing fuel cell inside the reactor. Robots enhance data collection, allowing us to make decisions at higher speed than ever before. This co benefits targets in goal nine, goal 11, and goal 13. We all know robotics and AI go hand in hand. So for example, the amount of seismic data has grown exponentially, aiding in the accurate detection and location of earthquakes. 20 seconds. New deep learning models have already been tested in Oklahoma and have shown to quick much more significantly um, detect earthquakes. If we leverage this alongside robot robotics, um, we'll be able to enhance post-disaster recovery. So to end off my argument, while trade-offs exist, the impact of robotics on progress towards the SDG goals is overwhelmingly positive. In a recent survey, there were seven SDG goals for which more than 75% of participants believe that robotics would have only positive impacts on their delivery. Excellent. Okay, that was like two phenomenal little keynotes <laughs> there. Let's take a moment to breathe. Uh, well done, and only a few seconds over your time. So to be fair, I'm gonna give the other side each 5.15, um, yeah. so we keep this as fair as possible. So now we are on the bad bot side, <laughs> and uh, we are gonna start up with um, a, an argument, opening statements from Dr. Jenkin. Great, thank you. Um, so where to start? Uh, so, Douglas Adams defined a robot as your plastic pal who's fun to be with, which I think is a much better description. Um, I'd rather, I don't want to go through all of the 169 different points in the, uh, in the UN's list. I'd rather just talk about a few of them. Imagine seven years from now when the UN, this process ends and the UN meets its target, it doesn't. Um, what can robotics do? So, thinking forward and what you might see at a common robotics conference um, or a workshop, much like the uh, ICRA one on, on robotics and sustainable goals. Um, so we have a, a robot that drives to the office. We have a robot that looks after your children. We have a robot that looks after your pets. We have a robot that looks after your, uh, your elder, aging parents and keeps everybody happy and does your medical procedures and so on. Where is that going to happen? It's not going to happen throughout the world. At best, it's going to happen in the developed countries, here, for example. So in the list of, <coughs> of, of goals in the uh, UN's list, reducing inequality everywhere is key. So robotics, if it's going to do anything, is going to make inequality worse. So just think about it for a second. Think about the robotics that you have over here, for example. The robots that crash in the middle of the night and so you have to stay here all night, those good robots that you have. What makes them work? You have a continuous power source that you can use to charge them. You have access to very expensive batteries working on very esoteric, uh, esoteric chemical processes to run. You have a really good data infrastructure that lets you do all of that. And when you deploy your robots outside, you can count on a 5G network or a satellite infrastructure to make the entire thing work. That just does not exist in most of the world. And so whatever else the robots are going to do, they're not going to address that particular aspect of the UN list of, of goals. In fact, if anything, they're going to make it worse. They're going to reinforce the inequality that already exists in the infrastructure throughout the world. Worse, each one of those things is going to change the world in which we work. So imagine here, for example, yes, we will reduce jobs associated with tedious tasks and repetitive tasks and possibly replace them with jobs from people who are 
trained to develop software systems and robotic systems to make it work. Now imagine the rest of the world which does not have access to this kind of infrastructure. They are going to have those jobs removed because they're going to be replaced by machines. And at the same time, they're not going to have the access to the uh, high-end educational infrastructure that will allow them to take on the jobs that have been identified as replacement jobs, right? Not making the buggy whips, but rather making the sports cars. That's just not going to happen. So yes, we may have really enhanced infrastructures in parts of the world where we have good power and good communications infrastructure and a good set of people who are trained well. It's not going to exist elsewhere. In terms of the <coughs> one more aspect of that, here in Canada, we're blessed with a very large renewable energy infrastructure. All of these systems require an amazing amount of power to work. So some parts of the world, this is going to be really good. Iceland is going to win like you wouldn't believe. They have an excess of electrical power, and they've got a really small landmass. And so building an, infra an infrastructure that makes that work is going to be wonderful. If you take another part of the world, say Barbados, which, for example, lacks any kind of hydroelectric power, any kind of renewable energy, it's just going to be a complete and unmitigated disaster, this idea that we can deploy robots across everything. It just isn't possible there. So again, we end up with this increased um, reinforcement of the inequality everywhere. The robots that we are building are, have an incredible impact on the environment. So yes, it might be true that we can use the robots to go and collect um, electronic waste. On the other hand, the robots are actually going to be the source of a lot of this electronic waste. So what we have is this environment where we're going to be harvesting more and more expensive rare material to build more and more sophisticated power sources for these devices, which we're then going to have to uh, deal with when they, when they come to the end of life. And so we end up with this issue with respect to responsible consumption, another one of the uh, uh, UN items, and the issues with respect to affordable and clean energy. And finally, I'd just like to talk a little bit about poverty and education. 20 so, seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds plus 15, I think. But anyway, <laughs> sure. So the, here, it's going to be great. Right? We will have access to a uh, robot-assisted educational infrastructure in seven years, according to the papers I read in ICFA and, and in some of the places. But that's just not going to happen a lot of the world. So what's going to happen is we will end up with this even larger digital-infused divide between things that we get here in the developed part of the world and things that are available to the rest of the planet. Nicely done. All right, these are good. Uh, Dr. Crane, over to you. Five minutes, uh, five minutes and 15 seconds starts right. now. Uh, OK, so I'm going to talk about three things. Uh, some of them have been touched on already. So the first is this idea of robotics and manufacturing to enhance productivity. And I think this, this is completely true. Robots will enhance productivity. And at what cost, right? And so. There was a recent MIT study on the macroeconomic effect that said that one more robot per thousand workers reduces the employment to population ratio by 0.2 percent points and wages by 0.42 percent. And the report also highlights that these effects are most felt by those with the least education, which is typically those who sort of need these wages the most, right? And so, yes, we can enhance productivity by using robotics, but if we look in through the lens of the sustainable development goals, you know, worsening inequality, suppressing wages, reducing employment, this doesn't look so good, right? And so I think we need to think with both eyes open about how we really enhance employment, wages, living conditions for, for people across the economic spectrum and across the world and, and do it sustainably. And I think that often centralizing manufacturing in these massive plants with robot-enabled capabilities will enhance productivity uh, and, and suppress wages and suppress employment. I also would like to make one sort of just thing, something I was thinking about when we talked about you know, enhancing productivity. Yes, this does, can suppress poverty and advance the world, but it's also led to a global, global climate crisis, right? And so from the 1800s to now, we've also admitted carbon dioxide, which is leading to the natural disasters that robots maybe could help with. Um, and so I think we need to think clearly about that as well. The second key role that I think robots are playing right now is in warfare. And so 
I think we know, and, and I'm from the US where this is particularly acute, that robots play a very active role in warfare. And this dehumanizes conflict. And of course it keeps American soldiers and other sol soldiers on the world safe, but it also, I think, lowers the bar to conflict. And of course, peace is one of the sustainable development goals, but, but warfare and, and wars in other countries leads to poverty, uh, it leads to hunger, it leads to, to poor infrastructure and other inequalities. And so I think when we think about robots, of course, we can think about these beautiful things that help in healthcare and things like that, but you know, really a lot of the dollars to robotics come from the US defense budget for drones and things like this. The third thing I'd like to talk about is robots and driverless cars. I think this, this could be the, the biggest area where robots touch our lives, particularly in developed countries. And I think that this could make mobility quite a bit easier and more accessible, which is wonderful. But I also think that it could potentially drastically increase vehicle miles traveled by, vehicle, by cars. And cars, light duty vehicles already comprise around 10% of global climate emissions, and that number is larger in developed countries. And so when you make mobility easier, maybe cheaper, you're also gonna make it, there's gonna be more of it, right? And so, uh, for example, there was a recent study that said that uh, people with Tesla autopilot went on 35% more long distance trips due to the self-driving capabilities, right? So that's great, like it makes it easier, but what does that do? That emits carbon dioxide, right? It also could pull uh, ridership away from public transit options, which are much, much better in terms of greenhouse gas emissions and local air pollution. And so I think we need to think very clearly about the potential effects. This could also lead to more clogged cities, right? If you increase uh, traffic on the roads, you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna be harder to get around. You pull people out of public transit. Uh, you're gonna create clogged cities, worse air quality, and things like that. And so I think, I think that this is a major challenge. So that's what I've got. Maybe I went a little under time. So. Uh, yeah, you're a little under, but that's OK. All Good right. job. Yeah. Uh, those were all excellent opening remarks. <laughs> this is going to be a, a tough debate, I can tell already. So now we're going to jump into, I think, what has been one of the most exciting parts of our debates is we have approximately 20 minutes where each team gets to challenge the other team. So we give each team two questions to ask to the other team and they have a chance to defend themselves. So if you're listening to what the uh, yes team said, you get a chance to um, you know, dig into that a little bit more. And then the audience has their opportunity to also ask their questions to specific teams. And this is a, a chance for all of us just to learn more and dive into things a, a bit further. So I'm going to start with the um, no or hindering team, give you guys an opportunity to ask the other team uh, two questions. So if you want to chat amongst yourselves, decide what those might be, uh, or just jump right into it. little debate happening up here, this is good. All right, are you guys ready? Sure. So you get two questions. Um, so let's start with the first one. All right, I'll use mine then. So you said that the UN SDGs had stalled. So perhaps robots are a solution, but perhaps they aren't. So if robots aren't the solution, what is? I think robots are the solution. <laughs> I might argue that um, the challenges that you presented aren't necessarily with robots, but rather the humans behind them. So robots are the only solution. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> one more question from uh, yeah, so one of the things that you brought up was robots in, in a medical context, and, and you brought up some great examples of, of uh, sort of uh, COVID-19 for perhaps interventions to reduce the infective load on, on healthcare workers, which I think is fantastic. But I also worry about them dehumanizing medicine, right? So if you have a, a robot nurse or a robot physician uh, that, that performs some perhaps routine tasks or otherwise, I think that one of the 
major roles in healthcare is not just to provide some kind of you know, bodily task, but also to provide a human connection to another person, which helps not just physical recovery, but mental recovery as well. So how do you think that that squares with robots there? I think that uh, with robots in healthcare, it is critically important to work with patients and families and practitioners to find ways and understand the role and scope of robotics. And um, arguably, there, there are aspects that do require humans and human interaction. So I think it's, it's sorting out and navigating which aspects or how to integrate the human connection in other ways, which I think has also been um, attempted in the COVID-19 pandemic as well. All right, great two questions. Okay, round of applause. So now it's a chance for our, uh, I'm just gonna call you the good bot team because that's much <laughs> easier than me saying, helping, hindering, yes, no. Uh, the good bot team uh, to challenge the uh, bad bot team, which unfortunately has that name of being the bad bot team. <laughs> So a couple questions for them. Okay, so a lot of the points that you brought up were on inequality. Um, so I actually wanted to provide a counter example. So Zipline is a company that works in Africa um, and it delivers medical supplies to remote regions of Africa. Um, in fact, there are two hubs in Rwanda that are able to do 500 flights a day. Um, that would not have been made possible without robotics. Um, so in that example, which is a real example that currently exists, robotics is actually helping mitigate inequality. So um, my question is, uh, I've just provided a quick, an, an example of where inequality <laughs> is actually countered by robotics, um, but your claim has been that robotics is only, can, only produce in, can only produce inequality. Well, I'm glad you found an example. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't know if I have to answer beyond that, um, but I, I, I mean, I think when we think about UN sustainability goals, we need to, th I, like exactly what you said, we need to think about scale, right? The UN sustainable development goals aren't going to be solved by 500 vaccines delivered. And I think what you described is fantastic, but when you think about the scale of uh, employment replacement due to robotics, when you think about the scale of, uh, of climate change caused in part by robotics, that's a different scale than a few vaccines being delivered. Not that that's not a fantastic thing, but you know, we need to think about these entire macroeconomic systems rather than a few isolated examples. Uh, feel free to challenge back or ask a, another question. You have one more opportunity. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if we think of this as a, a box plot, only one of the goals is about reducing the range. All of the others is about bringing the minimum up to a, to a minimum threshold. So making sure that poverty is below most of the goals, up, everything outside of number 10. is about bringing the minimum up to an acceptable threshold in the world. Robotics is doing, it can do that. It can bring up the minimum for sure. The, the issue of inequality is more an issue, I would argue, of unpredictability. It's, uh, it's unfortunate if the robots is the only solution. But I think that's not the question. The question no, is, that, is that, it progressing? It's not, is it the only solution? Is it part of the solution? So what is the rest of the solution? Let's suppose, let's suppose robots are <laughs> part of the solution. What's the rest of the solution? I think the beauty of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is rec the recognition that it's, the goals are often, you know, when you're talking about valuing people and the economy and the planet, we know people are the biggest risk to the planet, right? Like it's not an all or nothing. And I think it's recognizing the interdependence of all of these things um, and seeing robotics as, as one piece to the puzzle, not the only piece to the puzzle, but also that in applying robotics, we need to, applied in an ethical way that, that takes into consideration all of these sometimes conflicting goals to try to chart a better way forward for humanity. 
I just want to remind people to you our panels of the question, is robotics helping or hindering progress on UN Sustainable Development Goals? So for the team who is uh, focusing on the hindering side, do you have any last comments before we go to uh, Q&A from the audience? I guess one thing I would say is, is you made a, a really nice comment about sort of, is it the problem of the humans or is it the problems of the humans controlling the robotics? And I would say, what's the difference, right? Because humans always control robotics, ultimately in terms of the creation and the development. And so, to me, those two things are the same, right? Of course, inherently, a robot sitting on the ground is not gonna do a whole lot except for consume some minerals, right? But, but it's what it does and how the humans use it, right? And I think that's ultimately what, what their, their role can be. Uh, all right, so now it is your chance. We have 15 minutes for audience Q&A. Uh, I know there was a, a lot packed into these opening statements and this first discussion, so I'm hoping you can challenge our panelists uh, or maybe reinforce what they're saying. Do we have uh, any volunteers to go first with a question? And uh, we will come on over with the mic. Any questions? All right, right here. And, and feel free to ask it to a specific team. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Yeah, hi. Uh, actually, I have like on the, your last statement, I have a comment. Uh, if humans are to use like a tool in a bad way, does that make the tool bad or the one using it bad? Like I can use a knife to cut an apple or to kill someone. Is the knife bad or I am bad? Yeah, that's a great philosophical question. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so perhaps the answer to your question is that robots are neutral in the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and we can end the debate now, but I think that more relevantly is how are robots, or, or how are humans using the tool at hand, right? Because in, in, in the end, that's what is being done. But how is it hindering them? How are robots hindering? Yeah, if it's like, if we are to use it to help, like. Because the, the resources that are being put to deploying experimental systems, if they're just experimental systems, are taking away resources and effort and political will that could be used elsewhere on systems that have been shown to work. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's keep getting questions. Move, yeah, we can move on. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, any other questions from the audience? This is a, a great topic of discussion right here. And like I said, feel free to address them to a certain team. Sure, this is for the hindering team. Um, you asked the helping team what was the alternative to robots to solving the UN Sustainable Goals. So I'm just curious if you yourself had a solution being on the opposing team there. I thought I was asking a really good softball question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I and, and notwithstanding that, I mean, I understand what, why the answer was given the way it was, but the, it's actually terrifying. Like if robots are the solution, and they're autonomous, then I, for one, welcome our old robot overlords <laughs> because that's really what we're saying, right? Um, we're, we don't, at the moment, build autonomous robots in the sense that they're autonomous. We assume that they're not self-willed, right? We assume that they do what we want, and we assume that they follow instructions that we give, are given them, and so they're just, in some sense, as asked in the ethics question a moment ago, are they just a tool, right? Um, and I would hope that there's more than one tool in the box than a robot. Great, uh, another question in the back. Pretty good. Oh, I hope it is good. Um, this is a question for the good team, just on Melissa's comment of, well, we're making progress towards a lot of goals, maybe not number 10, but you know, a lot of them. Um, if you think about in the grand scheme of things, if the ultimate goal is to make progress on all of them, I feel like inequality kind of is that one that is a big sticking point and I don't think we really have a good solution for. Do you think it's worth it to make that much more progress than the other ones? If maybe this will exactly what the hindering team are saying, create a divide that maybe we, it's gonna be that much more insurmountable to eventually come to that equality point. Is it worth to make those other moderations on life or should we take a hot second and try to bit, maybe make a bit more progress there or check ourselves? I would argue that there are some short-term trade-offs we have to make. Uh, there are goals that if you look at them, or targets that if you look at the 169, they are trade-offs that we have to make. Uh, 
Um, however, that being said, I would argue the ones that we are able to achieve or positively achieve, there is a predictability associated with them. In the few that we are not are, are potentially not able to achieve um, with robotics right now, there's an unpredictability that hinges on the structures, our collaboration as humans. Um, and so uh, to that kind of point, I think that I would not say that we cannot achieve them with robotics or can't, robotics is not a tool that works against these um, goals. It's actually just that there are other factors outside of robotics than the system purely working, like um, uh, organizations, human collaboration, that would make us achieve these goals using robotics. And I might, if I can add, I don't see these goals as divisible, right? So if we're talking about inequality and striving towards the sustainable development goals, we want everyone to have electricity, right? So robotics is it, you know, that that's part of the goal is that people in the global south that have less access to electricity like we do, they do also, and then they can also benefit from robotics as well. So I, I, I don't think it's an either or. Again, I think these are really interconnected goals. I just want to give the bad bot team a chance to, any response to that? No? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, any other questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, I feel like there's going to be a few more here. Excellent questions, and uh, again, it's going to be pretty interesting for our final vote coming up in a little bit. So, this is a question that could be opened up to both teams, I guess. Um, it's a general question of whether you guys have seen the movie Wall-E. <laughs> so, it's a. I'll give it a short recap, which is basically a utopia dystopian future, and it's a sci-fi cartoon, I'll admit. But I think based on this conversation, it sounds like a good representation. Uh, it's a future where people don't even move. They have automatic hovering wheelchairs to get around. They live on a spaceship, but that's part of you know the solution to this bigger problem, which is they've completely run out the resources of Earth. So they're traveling the universe, trying to find a better place to live. And my question was generally, is that the future we're, we're actually working towards? Because I heard that there are, this is towards the good team, productivity. And is that, what is the optimal point of productivity? What's the most optimal, what does optimal productivity look like? And if that movie is, is sort of an example, is there a counterpoint to why that isn't true? So are we, are we going to run out all the resources on Earth to develop this world of people that don't even need to walk or food that comes to you? You don't have to go to the food. Um, I, I think it's just a general idea of, what should we, what do we imagine that if we're making productive, if we're being productive through robotics, are we going in the right direction um, if we take it all the way? And when should we sort of hit the brakes on that? So this all right, an opportunity for each team to respond. Remember, you're still trying to earn the votes from the audience, so take your time. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Oh, I can go first. Well, so first of all, spoilers. You know, people haven't seen the movie. Um, it, I mean, it's an interesting concept, right? You have a robot that collects garbage and it's self-willed and it does its things. And I'd love to work on that project. But, but uh, also it's powered forever. I, I don't know how you do that. But um, it, there is this long-term question about, you know, are we consuming the energy, power, resource, infrastructure of the planet and how fast? And, not equipped to answer that. And, and what does productivity for productivity's sake mean? And what does it get us, right? It got us quite far in terms of reducing poverty and, and bringing people electricity. But is there a point at which, like Matt said, do we have enough? And is it now more about redistributing redist the resources that we have and allowing everybody to eat and everybody economic opportunity, right? And, and I don't think that robots are helping with that redistribution. I think I'm going to sound like a broken record again, but I think these sustainable development goals are indivisible, right? So one of the pieces is how do we find that right balance? So I don't think someone who, has, who signs on to the vision of the sustainable development agenda thinks that we're going to live in this future where 
we don't move and robots bring us our food because that would not align with some of the other goals, right? So it's seeing how do we move forward in the best way for the planet, for people and for society. And I think that robotics has a role to play in that. And then as humans, it's our responsibility to make sure we're moving in that direction that is responsible and sustainable um, for all 17 goals. And the 17 goals could be in conflict with one another. So it's not easy, but I think robotics can help us move towards the future that we have envisioned. All right, I know there was a couple other people who had their hands raised. We do have a few more minutes left for questions. Hi, uh, on uh, inequality being unpredictable, I feel like in terms of like other technological advancements, we've seen like a pretty common trend of like it being exploited to the absolute maximum for people to make money. Like think about like cell phones and like the internet, like these things have existed for a while and yet not everyone has access to them. So why will robots be any different? Seems uh, predictable. I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, firstly, I think if we look at the distribution of cell phones in the world, uh, there are a lot of developing nations that actually have a lot more cell phones than we would have predicted they would have had. Um, and they've actually built their infrastructure around this new technology, which is something where a lot of developed nations had existing infrastructure and they kind of had to overturn this infrastructure. Where there was no infrastructure, it was almost like a, a, a build fresh to this new technology. And I think that that has a, as a possibility that it will, we will, in develop, a lot of developing nations, there will be, we will be building new, fresh infrastructure to this new technology. It's not like we have, it, the, the uptake is not like they have the, the same follow linear progression um, where you have to build on top of each other. It's, it's a completely new way. Excellent. Uh, okay, so I think we have at least there was someone else with their hand raised. Oh, right up front. One of our previous debaters is getting in on this. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think there are two core pieces to the arguments that we are hearing. One is something along the lines of the second thermodynamics law, which is basically can robots create or bring whatever energy that they're going to be consuming? I think that's kind of core to the arguments that we are hearing. And the other one is the inequality argument that, uh, so it's not clear to me why we think that uh, robots are going to increase inequality, like have computers increased inequality, have cell phones increased inequality. I would like to hear more about those two points. Sure, so if you're a refugee trying to get into the US in the south and you don't have a cell phone, you can't get in. So, yes. Well, and, and what I would say is that robots already have increased inequality. It's not about what they will do. It, it, they already have done that by replacing, I mean, there are macroeconomic studies that have shown this concretely, that they increase inequality. They suppress wages and they reduce employment, and they do this to the people with, with the least education, right? And so it's not about will it happen, it's not about hypotheticals, it's already happening, and you increase the amount of robots, presumably will happen more. And, and I think that, you know, we talk about job replacement and things like that, it, it, it makes sense intellectually, but if you just look at what actually happens, at least on average, it, it doesn't happen. All right, uh, any other questions from the audience? Any burning questions? Josh, do you have a question? <laughs> okay, so our last question. I always look like I have one. Uh, just to Jackson's last comment, so the, uh, interestingly, not that long ago, uh, Stats Canada came up with some interesting data that suggested that um, companies in Canada at least now, so we're not talking about around the world, but that um, hired robots or that brought robots into their businesses um, actually ended up hiring more people, um, which I think was counterintuitive to what a lot of people thought and sort of counterintuitive to what you said. So um, I thought maybe a comment on that or I mean is this actually counterintuitive or is this something that we should expect yeah, to see? Yeah, and, and I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to. I guess my immediate thought is what kind of people are they hiring? Right? And, and okay, you get some robots, you increase the economic output of your company, of course you're gonna hire more people because now you have more money, right? 
And who are you hiring? Are you hiring engineers or are you hiring technicians? Who needs the job? Do engineers need the job or do technicians need the job, right? So I think when we think about inequality, we need to think about not just how many jobs, but what jobs. And I don't know exactly the answer to that in, in this study particularly, but at least in, in the, the data that I've seen, the, the answer is not so good. And you're sort of actually right, so I saved that for the end. <laughs> that the, the jobs got redistributed a little bit, yeah, for sure. So there's a little bit of that happening. So yeah, thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, all right, before we go to our closing remarks, big round of applause for... Okay, so in this last portion of our debate, each of our debaters has an opportunity to have four minutes for closing statements. This is your chance to move the needle. I want to remind you guys uh, what it was at. Uh, we had uh, yes uh, or helping at around 68%, no at 31%. So feel free to use your closing remarks to poke holes in the other side's uh, statements um, or just reinforce what you had said previously. So I'm going to start um, back over here with Dr. Aldersee with um, your closing statement. Uh, I'll start the clock so you have four minutes. I don't think I'll take the four minutes, although I think your, your five minutes was much faster than mine was. Um, <laughs> so as I've identified, robotics is already making great strides towards multiple SDGs, and their continued use will be instrumental in meeting the targets set out by the UN by 2030. And while there are risks and concerns related to the widespread use of technology uh, throughout the world, Human ingenuity, such as strong governance bodies and creation of jobs that work in partnership with robotics will help to mitigate the risks and allow humans and the planet to flourish alongside advancements in robotics technology. And I think that's where I, I was going to, you know, if we have the humans behind the robots, designing them and operating them in a way that speaks to the overall spirit and vision of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, then I think they can help to push the needle towards the UN SDGs. Um, we do need innovation. We need robotics and automation technologies to help us, to help push us forwards toward the achievement of the 17 SDGs by 2030, because we can't just proceed as we have been and expect that we'll meet the SDG target. So while robotics have, have helped to, to push the needle so far, I think that their use and application could be used so much more in the future as well. Um, but it is really important for us to use the knowledge that we have um, and ethics and, you know, you know the, recognize the indivisibility of these sustainable development goals and, that, and, and find the balance and help have robotics help us achieve that balance. Uh, and, and in doing that, we'll help to secure a future with safety and dignity for all on a healthy planet uh, for decades to come. All right, uh, Melissa. Okay, so we've spoken a lot about how robotics uh, enhances inequality because of reducing jobs. And there was a remark about, well, who gets those jobs? Engineers, and I would argue engineers need jobs too. Um, <laughs> uh, but what it comes down to, if we think about what that means, it means quality education, right? So the gap is quality education. And I would actually argue that robotics can help us give quality education throughout the world. Um, if you look at this one, the sustainability development goals, one of the targets is to get more qualified teachers throughout the world. And there are actually 14, if you look at the statistics, 14% of teachers um, in developing nations do not meet the minimum qualifications. So how are we going to train the next generation of uh, people that are able to do this without enhancing education. And robotics is able, it can, it would be an incredible tool and is an incredible tool along with AI, of course, these go hand in hand, um, to actually build uh, training, tra improve training to, for teachers, um, reach mass scale, enhanced quality education that would develop the next generation of engineers, scientists that are actually working in robotics to improve society. All right, uh, Dr. Jenkin. So I would argue that robots are at best agnostic to the uh, SDGs. 
they're a tool, certainly the way they're using them. And so anything invested in the tool that doesn't show improvement in these particular things, it's money that we're throwing away, that we could use better in tools that have shown to be successful. Training people to be teachers, for example, if education is the aspect. Sending people to assist in environments if healthcare is the, is the issue and so on. We have developed a large number of experimental robotic systems and we have yet to see someone deploy them in large scale anywhere. So either the people that are making the decisions to invest the money to deploy them are unaware of it or they are aware of them and they've decided that they're not as good as existing mechanisms. Um, so I think the question that we're being asked, the robots are neither at fault or, uh, or not here. It's our ability to use the appropriate tools to solve the problem. So what about using robots as a tool? Well, we've already discussed they reinforce inequality, they have a negative environmental impact, they divert resources from other uh, potential solutions to the problem. And as was pointed out earlier, if we're actually going to deploy these things, we have to have some governmental structure that makes these things work. And we don't have that either. So I think until we have those tools in place and we have demonstrated effectiveness of robotic systems to address some of these things in, on a large scale, it's probably not time to do it. And doing it now is just going to imperil our ability to meet the goals uh, such that we'll be able to do in the next seven years. Okay, Dr. Crane. Okay, um, yeah, so I guess the first thing I just jotted down was, was the idea of this ethical use of technology or using robotics in concert with governance structures. And, and I think that you're right that robots can be really beneficial if ethically used, but will they, right? Has, has a new rapidly developing technology ever really been kept under wraps using governance structures and ethics and things like that, right? You think about the internet, not really, right? You think about, you know, open AI and chat GPT, well, the jury's out, but maybe not, right? And so, so yes, it's a tool. And yes, it's up to the humans to determine the fate. But if we look at other technology rollout as an example, things are going to be good, but there's going to be a lot of bad there too. And, and that's what I worry about. The next is about education and, and certainly robots could have a lot of information embedded them and the ability to teach calculus or mathematics or whatever else. But I would also argue that, that a big role of education is the, the role of human contact and human connection and, and building social skills that enable students to connect with other people and ultimately enact change. And I think that a robot teacher, educator, is gonna have a really hard time doing that. And so I worry that if we rely too much on these robotics in the role of education, that we will lose some of these critical, albeit softer, roles of education. And the third thing that I would that say is, you know, it's, it's a little bit contested, right, whether robots are good or bad for the SDGs. And robots are really cool, right? Like, I think all of us recognize that they're really sexy. Like, there's all these really cool robots over here. It's really fun to work on them, to tinker around with them. And that's taking some of the best engineers who could be working on sustainable development goals and instead working on these things that are maybe good, maybe bad, right? And so maybe we should be working on solar cells that are a little bit clearer what their role is, right? Um, so thanks very much for your attention. All right. Okay. Now it's the uh, moment of truth where everybody gets to vote again so we can bring that back up on the screen. Uh, we're going to take one minute and allow you all to vote again. And remembering the question is, is robotics helping or hindering our progress toward the UN Sustainable Development Goals? If, you, yeah, we have helping and hindering there this time. Oh, this is getting interesting. So we'll give it a minute to give everybody a chance to vote. I know we had at least 40-some responses last time. Move the needle. Oh, collect, collect. There's <laughs> <laughs> you blue chat bot. <laughs> oh. Wow. Definitely a few more people voting this time. Yeah. <laughs> a little closer. 
All right. Uh, has I'm just waiting a sec. Oh, they're still voting. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, it's getting closer and closer. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> okay, anyone still have to vote? Everyone done voting. So 59 responses. So just want to mark down that, uh, you know, big round of applause for the team that is arguing for helping. You guys go well. Congratulations. <laughs> 57% uh, versus hindering at 42%. Uh, but good job to the hindering team because you did gain some votes, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Potentially, possibly. Uh, great job to our panelists. Another round of applause. Thank you so much.